Hello everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for taking so long to do another video because recently my workload is actually quite heavy. This explains why so much delay for this video. Today, I mainly want to focus to do an example how can we actually find the reflection coefficient and impedance by calculation or by Smith chart? So in fact, there are two ways to obtain the reflection coefficient and also the input impedance by either the conventional way to calculate or we can use a graphical way using a Smith chart to do this. This will be the part 14 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. For transmission line theory, I suggest you to go one by one, which means from part one onward all the way to this part 14, so that you have a comprehensive understanding on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I really appreciate that. Before we actually go through an example, okay, let's understand what is actually a Smith chart. Okay, the Smith chart is a graphical aid. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, you can solve the problem of transmission line by either calculation or to use this Smith chart as a graphical aid. Okay, basically they are very useful for solving transmission line problem. Although there are a numbers of other impedance and also reflection coefficient charts, that can be used for such problem. Okay, the Smith chart is probably the best known and most widely used. Okay, so this actually show you a very simple image on a Smith chart. Okay, Smith chart may seem very intimidating at the first glance. However, the understanding is to realize that it's actually based on a polar plot of the voltage reflection coefficient, which I'm going to show it to you later on. How can we actually do this to solve most of the problem on the Smith chart? The magnitude, okay, for example, the reflection coefficient, they are actually plot as a radius, okay, which means that we actually draw a circle. Okay, again, like what I mentioned, I will show it to you. And basically, the magnitude of this reflection coefficient is less than one. Okay, remember, reflection coefficient cannot be more than one. Most, most of all, the maximum number can be only equals to one but definitely not more than one. Basically, they form a circle okay, at the center of the chart. And the angle is from minus 180 degree to 180 degree. Basically, they start out from the right-hand side. So for example, over here will be all the positive number, all the way from zero, all the way to 180. On the other side, we can start from zero and also all the way to minus 180 degree. Okay, so keep this in mind. Later on, we will do this. Thus, a length of lambda over 2, okay, so which means that a transmission line okay, with this lambda over 2 or many, any multiply, so for, for example, 2 times, 3 times, 4 times, etc. Basically, they uh, actually do a rotation, okay, 2 pi, okay, which means that 360 degree, which means that they are basically moving back to the original point. Imagine this point here, okay, we move 360 degree, we come back to the same original point. So this is what it means. With a transmission line of lambda over 2, we basically return back to the original line. So this is what you want to mention on the Smith chart. So this gives you some example or some understanding on Smith chart. So now we are ready to work for an example. Okay, so a load impedance of 40 plus J70 ohms terminate a 100 ohms transmission line that is 0 0.3 lambda long. Find the reflection coefficient at the load, the reflection coefficient at the input to the line, the input impedance, the standing wave ratio, and also the return loss. 
Okay, so these are all the parameters that we are tasked to find. So we do one by one. Firstly, let's find the reflection coefficient at the load first. Okay, so if you have followed me okay, on the earlier on series discussion on transmission line theory, this is the formula to calculate the reflection coefficient at the load. Okay, so the question given to us, this will be the ZL, this will be the characteristics of the impedance, which is 100 ohm. Okay, so this in short basically describe the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, which is 100 ohm. We have the load, which is 40 plus J70. Okay, so over here, ZL okay, will be equal to 40 plus J70, which is here. Z0, which is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, which is 100. Over here is the same, so basically it's a sign here. Instead of minus, it becomes a plus. So over here, if you punch your calculator, you should be able to get this answer, okay, which is 0 0.59, okay, with a degree, 103.4 degree. Okay, so basically this will be the reflection coefficient at the load. So over here, you can see that I actually solved this reflection coefficient at the load through the calculation. Next, on the BSWR, again, if you follow through, this will be the formula to calculate my BSWR. Okay, so this is basically the magnitude. Okay, so it's 0 0.59. So again, if you punch your calculator, you should be able to get this 3.878. So this will be the BSWR. So now over here, I actually show how can we find the reflection coefficient at the load and also the BSWR through the calculation. Next, I'm going to show you to you how can we actually find this true Smith chart. How can we actually start? Okay, so if you still remember, this is the load that is given to us. So what we need to do is basically we divide over the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, which is 100. So from here, I actually obtain 0 0.4 plus J0 0.7. How can we actually plot this into the Smith chart? I have also earlier on done a discussion on Smith chart. So again, I'll put that Smith chart discussion playlist under the description. You can take a look on this in order to know how to plot onto Smith chart. But let me do a very quick explanation. How can we actually plot these two value onto the Smith chart? So this is what we call the real value. This is what we call the imaginary value. So the real value basically is on this horizontal line. So if you look through, this is actually 0 0.4 over here. So I follow the track over here. So next, I will be looking at the imaginary since this is positive. So I know that you were on the so-called on the top portion of the speed chart. So I follow through to find the word 0 0.7. As I can see over here is 0 0.7. So the two line that intercept, this will be the position of ZL. Okay, so I got this position. So next, what I need to do is, okay, I do a circle. How I draw the circle is basically using a compass. So I use a compass center over here, and then I draw a circle. Okay, I guess you understand how I actually do this. Again, let me say that it's always at the center of the screen chart. Okay, you can see that a, a value here of 1 over here. And then basically, I have this point here. So I put my pencil part of the compass over here and i can actually draw a circle over here so this is how i draw the circle so next okay i have this point i just want to draw a straight line from the center of the smith chart all the way over here so basically this is what we can do currently okay so let me explain what can we actually obtain from here okay firstly we can obtain the reflection coefficient at the load. How I get this 0 0.59? Okay, can you see the red color line? Okay, so this red color line is basically draw earlier on, okay, basically from the center of the screen chart all the way to the position of ZL. So I have this red color line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put onto the legend of the Smith chart over here. Okay, so this portion is actually the reflection coefficient as you can see from here. So I put the so-called the line, okay, early on over this, I put it horizontally, okay, instead of this orientation, I put it horizontally, and I actually can obtain that the reflection coefficient at the load is somewhere like 0 0.59. That's how I get this 
refraction coefficient at 0 0.5 line. The same, okay, so this same line here, okay, again, I put it horizontally, okay, I can also obtain the VSWR, for example, for this case here, you can see that this part is actually the VSWR, and if I put this nicely, you can see that VSWR is about 3.9, I can also do the return loss. Again, if I put this nicely, okay, I can find that the return loss is about 4.6 dB. Okay, so now let's take a close look. Okay, is this value close to what we have calculated earlier on? Okay, so this is basically the refraction coefficient at the load, which is 0 0.59. Okay, let's take a look here. So I have calculated. Okay, I'm, I, oh, wow, it's exactly 0 0.59. Okay, so later on, I will show you how to see this angle at the Smith chart but at this moment okay we have seen that the magnitude is 0 0.59 is exactly the same on the Smith chart and also on the calculation next is on the vswr 3.9 so vswr is 3.878 okay i don't think we can see this value at the Smith chart i think 3.9 is quite a fair decent of accurate so we successfully okay calculate the Reflection coefficient at the load and also VSWR by calculation and also by smooth chart. One thing I can comment is the value, they are actually quite accurate. Okay, we can also get the return loss. As I mentioned, again, the same thing here. Okay, so what you need to do is you can see that this is basically for the return loss. Okay, I can actually see that from this, is actually the return loss is 4.6 dB. So from here, I have successfully calculated the reflection coefficient only on the magnitude. I will show you on the angle, VSWR, and also the return loss. Next year, as promised, okay, I'm going to show you to you how can we actually obtain the angle. Okay, so basically this is what I just want to zoom in this part so that you will be able to see clearly. I just zoom this part here so you can see that this basically is the position of ZL, which is over here. So from here you can see that this is 100, this is 110. So 100, 102, about 104, 6, 8, and then 110. So basically, I know that the angle is 104. That's how I get my reflection coefficient at the load. 0 0.59 angle of 104. Okay, I think it's very similar with what I have calculated earlier on. 104, pretty decent. Okay, so from here, I conclude that either by calculation or by screen chart, the result okay, is actually highly correlated. So next, okay, I'm going to show you to you how can we actually calculate the input impedance of the transmission line. Again, let me do my calculation first. Okay, so if you follow through my discussion on transmission line theory, this is the set of formula to calculate the input characteristic. So from here, okay, I just want to concentrate this part first. So tangent beta length. So basically this beta is actually 2 pi over lambda. The length is basically the length of a transmission line you can see from here, which is 0 0.3 lambda. So this thing, lambda, lambda cancel, and I get 0 0.6 pi. So from here, I punch my calculator. I should be able to come out this number, which is minus 3.08. Okay, so guys, if you want to enter pi, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. So if you want to do in degree, this pi is equal to 180 degree. Okay, basically what you need to do is 180 multiplied by 0 0.6. Then you put this tangent. Okay, you should be able to arrive at this minus 3.08. Okay, so with all this, okay, I actually will substitute this minus 3.08 into this tangent beta length here, as you can see from here. And ZL is basically 40 plus J70, which is here. Characteristic impedance of the transmission line, which is 100. Okay, this will be the characteristic impedance of the transmission line plus ZL, which is 40 plus J70. Okay, so from here, I punch my calculator. Okay, I have calculated the input impedance, okay, which is 36.56 minus J61.16. Okay, so again, this is by calculation. Let me show you to you how you can actually do this by Smith chart. Okay, so how much to move is firstly before we go on. Okay, so basically this is the point here. This ZL is actually the point at the load here, which is 40 plus J70, which I have brought this point as I have explained earlier on. So this point here, I, I so-called draw a straight line, cut through 
the center of the smith chart and also the characteristic impedance of the load and i purposely stretch it through outside the smith chart again i zoom in this part over here you can see that basically over here you can see that this part here is in between here 0 0.1 and 0 0.11 okay right and the middle roughly about the middle so i conclude that this is 0 0.105 lambda okay so basically this is what i have calculated 0 0.105 lambda okay which is over here so now you need to ask yourself okay so actually there are two directions one is towards the generator another one is towards the load so how to distinguish whether is it towards the generator or towards the load okay for example this point z l which is over here you can see that this is a transmission line what i'm going to do is basically i'm moving towards the generator okay generator typically refer to the source as i travel from the load i actually travel from this transmission line i actually move towards the generator so from here this is the point here okay i need to move it towards the generator to this point then i will be able to obtain my z in do you agree so i need to move okay towards the generator before i can actually reach this point so how much to move is basically 0 0.3 lambda but let me explain how we actually determine move towards the generator or move towards the load how we know okay so i zoom this part here okay i zoom this part here you can see from here i zoom into this part here you can see that basically the clockwise direction is moved towards generator which means that moving okay so called clockwise is actually moving towards the generator and if we move anti-clockwise we actually move towards the load for this case here this point here we need to move okay clockwise in order to move towards the generator how much to move will be 0 0.3 lambda as i explained to you so i need to move from this point all the way to 0 0.3 lambda how i know that i actually stop at this point okay let me explain okay again Okay, let's focus over here. So over here, earlier on, I have mentioned that this is actually 0 0.105 and I need to move 0 0.3 lambda. Okay, do you agree? So basically, this is this point here basically is 0 0.105 lambda. So I actually need to move 0 0.3. So what happened here is basically I will obtain 0 0.405 lambda. So if you take a close look over here, okay, you can see that this is 0 0.40. This is 0 0.41. So right at the middle will be 0 0.405. I draw this point here. So next, okay, I draw this point here, which is over here. So I'm going to draw one straight line cutting through the center of the screen chart. Can you see here? I'm going to draw a so-called a straight line cutting through my Z in and also the center of screen chart. So basically, this is what I'm going to do for this part here. And then I actually managed to find the characteristic impedance of to be more in my input characteristic impedance how i actually read this reading so from here you can see that this is the real part okay the real part is about 0 0.36 okay so this will be the imaginary part which is 0 0.6 okay so from here i need to so-called normalize it back earlier on i divide by 100 so now i need to multiply by 100 so therefore i calculate that this is 36 minus j60 okay so if you take a look Early on, okay, they are quite similar, okay, which is 36 minus J61. Okay, but what I actually obtained, okay, which I will say that this is actually quite reasonable accurate. So over this video, you can see that I actually calculate and also work towards the solution by spin chart. And I have also concluded that either calculation or by spin chart, the value is not that far off. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.